Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Hey, Ashley. Hey, girl. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good, good. Ready to get into some content for the new year. Happy new year, everyone. 2023. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Ashley. I'm super excited. We are recapping Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. It came out in 2022. It is a mystery, a thriller, a comedy. Two hours and 20 minutes, rated PG-13, available on Netflix. Here's a quick summary. Tech billionaire Miles Bronze invites his friends for a getaway on his private Greek island. When someone turns up dead, detective Benoit Block is put on the case. This is a star-studded film starring my favorite Bond, Daniel Craig. (laughs) as Dan Juan Block, Edward Norton as Miles Braun, Janelle Monet mm-hmm. as Andy, Catherine Hahn as Claire, Leslie Odom Jr., who I adore. He was okay. As- Boyd in this too. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I just need for him to sing. Just sing, sir. Okay. Um, as Lionel. <laughs> We have Jessica Hinwick as Peg. We have Madeline Celine as Whiskey, Kate Hudson as Birdie, and Dave Batista as Duke. This film is directed, written, produced by Ryan Johnson. Rotten Tomatoes, both critics and audience scores are currently at 93%. Google users give this film... 84%. Ashley, what's your grade for Glass Onion? All right. My grade is a B plus for Glass Onion, a nice out mystery. I had the fam watching this the day it dropped on Netflix. Uh, Janelle Monet. I mean, that's that's all I got for (laughs) y'all. I love me some Janelle Monet. Um, This was a fun time. Um, I love a murder mystery. I'm a big Clue person, even though they shaded Clue in this movie. (laughs) I adore Clue. It's actually one of my favorite board games. (laughs) Mine too. And I still watch the movie. Like, I still watch that movie. Um, But I just, I enjoy kind of the whodunit of it all. And I think that they made this so kind of slapsticky and fun and goofy. And it was just, it was just a good time. So B plus, what about you? I gave this film an A minus. As you mentioned, I love, love a whodunit. I love to try to figure out the mystery. I also love a lush scenic moment. The fact that they're they're in Greece. I love rich people and their shenanigans. (laughs) And as I mentioned, I adore a good murder mystery. So it's an A minus for me. They're are moments where I absolutely laughed out loud. And I actually enjoyed watching it a second time, even more than the first. And so with that, let's get into our spoiler alert. So the movie starts in a very mysterious way. It is during the pandemic, May of 2020. It's good to be mindful of that because we are going to get into that a little bit later. But apparently this billionaire, Miles Braun, is sending out invitations to a very eclectic group of friends. We have Governor Claire, who I always like to say when I see her, it was Agatha all along. We have (laughs) scientist, chemist Lionel, who is played by the great Leslie Odom Jr., who 
is on a conference call complaining about this mysterious Miles who only sends faxes and brainstorms out of the box ideas that sometimes are very lucrative. I put in my notes right away. And I'm going to go ahead and ask you this too. Why are wealthy men allowed to be eccentric? Like their behaviors are explained away. Because everybody is sucking from the teat, usually, who is explaining the behaviors away, right? It's like there's a reverence once you reach a certain level of financial success in America in particular, probably globally as well. And so once you have everybody sucking from the teat, You can kind of do what you want. And it's already a male dominated society and in particular certain industries that, you know, Miles and those folks are in that once once you've established that there's success and that the things you say work, everybody else is just on payroll. It definitely taps into the allure of who's this Miles We have a socialite in Birdie who is on a very short leash because of her politically incorrect She's an Pretty idiot. Much any, anytime she opens up her mouth. I was going to say tweets, social media. I think it's just just in general, right? She's an idiot. And we have the meathead Duke, who was talking about the breastification of America, who, mind you, also still lives with his mom. Mm-hmm. This solid box is delivered and they are on this group call and they are able to solve a series of games and puzzles to get this invitation to spend time with Miles Braun on his private island in Greece. I put in my notes, Ashley, I need rich friends. Mm. (laughs) Can you imagine getting invited to a private island during the pandemic? Would you go? Once they got shot with whatever probably first (laughs) round of you know, vaccines were available, (laughs) probably, because that was wild. I was like, oh, yeah, of course, this is probably legit. And the fact that it was Ethan Hawke, I'm like, y'all had this man make a cameo literally just to play this one little part. Ethan Hawke? I was waiting for him. And that is part of what I absolutely adore about this movie. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. But the cameos were insane. They were insane. But you know, at the same time, though, Delora, I feel like I'm weird now about rich people with stuff like this. I'd be like, what are y'all about? To, what is really going on? I'd be See, watching too much too stuff. Many questions. I'm serious, though. <laughs> like, I'd be watching too much stuff. I'd be like, y'all be too bored. Y'all probably be eating people. And do I remember Atlanta where all them people was eating hands? Uh, yeah. Like that was like this cuisine. Bruh, yeah. Y'all get too bored for me. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if it was my friend, I might trust it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about archetypes. You have any first impressions on this friend group that we later come to know as the disruptors? Again, I thought Kay Hudson was an idiot. I thought it was funny that Duke's mom was the smartest one in the room (laughs) on that call. Yes. (laughs) I love that they had a black man as the scientist. I love the mystery with Janelle Monae. Like I, her rage with that box. I was like, what the hell is going on? They put such a target on her immediately. Yes. As being so central to whatever mystery was going on that it just made me fascinating. And then seeing Catherine Hahn play so straight laced was weird. Was it? <laughs> yes, because Catherine Hahn is she's I've seen her in such a variety of roles. Absolutely. But this was definitely probably the most straight laced. Like she's a politician. You know, she always wore beige. No, when he said, you're so beige, I was like, and that's so not Catherine Hahn. So like, you're really, you're really playing this role. Well, ma'am. So, and again, Leslie was just fine. Like, I almost couldn't get over that. And even, you know, with his character. I his, his suits. And Girl, yeah, I was, the, the I loved beard, it. The hair, everything. I was like, <laughs> whoo, Leslie. I, I want to be Stop. in the happens i love that Lord okay Jesus. anyway okay <laughs> well what were your thoughts on seeing remnants of the pandemic and i asked that because after getting the, the 
initial introduction of this particular group, you can tell a, a lot about a person based off the mask they wear. Yeah, yeah. You could tell who was taking things. You could tell where everybody stood with that. You had Catherine Hahn and Leslie's characters with the mask and doing all that. And even... um detective blanc blanc yeah and you had you know kate hudson's character roll up with her little see-through mask not I doing anything but trying to look cute like that I've and never i wanted seen to smack that mask the before but that's you know and she wanted to hug right and you could tell the apprehension for everybody else wanted to hug but then duke comes and him and his girl Ooh, don't have masks at all at so all. it definitely said a lot about the dynamic and the types of individuals that they were supposed to be People that you wouldn't imagine actually being friends, right? Like, yeah. And I'm glad that they gave an explanation of how, where they were when they all first met and how they kind of came together. Cause it was definitely an eclectic bunch. Yes. And speaking of arrivals, when Andy shows up, everything stops. <laughs> you could hear a pin drop. We make it to Miles Braun's private island and again this is part of the comedy and the humor that just made me laugh out loud his deck is apparently made by banksy the artist the artist when they show up he's playing the beatles blackbird on the original guitar and when he goes to hug birdie he throws it in the sand like it's a worthless piece of wood rich people and when he saw Andy, you would have thought he saw a ghost. Say what you want about Edward Norton. He is a great actor. <laughs> He's a great actor. I don't think there's any denying that. On the hour, there's a dung that goes on that apparently was composed by Phil Grass. But fun fact, it was voiced by Jason Gordon Lovett, who has had a cameo in every Ryan Johnson's movie he's not, ever done. Not JGL. Didn't know that. That was a fun fact and had me rolling. We get an explanation of his of his grand house, which he refers to as the glass onion. He talks about the glass onion representing the past, present, and future. Rooms are based off of chakras. You get to know a lot about a person after first meeting him. And I think it's very interesting that up until this point, Miles has been such a mystery. He's been so hyped on being this genius and innovator. But when you finally meet him, what do you think, Ashley? I caught his misuse of a word the first time he spoke it when they were all on the sand and he was explaining the weekend. And I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> like, that's you, it. You it was picked so, up on that. Oh, I picked up on it immediately. It was so glaring to me. I was like, that's not a word. What's going on here? Are you just a, almost like a um, actor playing a role for mm. the real Miles? Like, I didn't know what to like expect or what was really going on but I definitely caught it my first watch through I was like you don't seem like what I thought it seems like a more comical slapsticky version of this but then again probably a lot of these eccentric billionaires in life are like this so he's like an amalgamation of you know I Elon immediately thought Musk. Elon Musk. Absolutely. And, and probably Bezos, who's always wearing a cowboy hat, I feel like, in everything I see him in. And, you know. Because they <laughs> they lack personality, so they buy it, right? Or they're just freaking weird, you know? At a certain <laughs> point, I feel like you probably just lose touch with normalcy, reality. I don't know. When you have such excess, when things stop mattering to you, I don't know what it is that you hold valuable. Like when we meet him, it doesn't seem like he has a family. It doesn't seem like he has yes. anything else or anybody else around. Or faith or something to ground him. Yeah. So like, who is he and what, what do you, what are you striving for? What do you stand for? What are, what are, what are you wanting to do with this wealth and with this business you have at your disposal? So I was still very like, 
neutral at this point. He seemed like, you know, again, a lot of eccentric billionaires, but is he real or no? Like, is this, re- <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't call it yet. And the important fact that I forgot to mention up into this point is that they're not only spending time with him, but they are there to solve his murder. We find out very quickly that Detective Blanc was not invited to the party. That was something that was, it stood out to me immediately during my first watch. Like this man who names drops every turn you get going into his house. And of course he would have the world's greatest detective show up for his murder mystery. Like that just seemed like a very logical thing. But we find out that he had those invitations created and he only had a certain number made and he didn't think about it too much he allowed detective blanc to stay it was more surprising to me that he wasn't the one invited because he made it seem like andy was the one who would have been the one who was not invited by his reaction by that initial reaction on the beach absolutely absolutely so now that we have this group of friends together it is just fascinating to see how they interact with one another like some of my observations are birdie is dealing with an identity crisis because she seems like she's dealing with an a deflated ego especially when she sees whiskey (laughs) at the pool but can we give shout shout outs to k hudson and that body yaddy yaddy girl girl i was like you strut (laughs) sweetheart Three Where children? Did you, when have i have i not seen you in a swimsuit before like what i feel like i'm seeing you for the first time she looked fucking amazing 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 whiskey is a little too close to miles in my personal opinion a little <laughs> <laughs> between governor claire and uh Lionel as well but I don't know if we ever got to the root of that and to see Detective Blanc go out in his bathing suit had me rolling too though I'm not gonna lie like it was very cute and very like chic but I've never seen anything like that before (laughs) have you I couldn't stop looking at Lionel I um (laughs) I, I I was I was still trying to figure out all of the angles Delora he is acting he was acting so goofy compared to the capacity that we know that he has that it seemed like he was just playing into this into a character or role and that outfit and everything else was a part of that of kind I'm of like that you say that because yeah. i don't recall him being like this in the first no film. he's playing very demure and almost goofy like oh this is amazing. Oh, this, this, and that. I would, oh, I didn't know that. I wouldn't have thought that. Like, this man is the world's foremost detective. Right. Well, even in his first interaction with Andy when they were still on the beach, she was like, rich people. And he's like, I know, right? And it's like, uh, okay, like, you're always around rich people, but sure. <laughs> yeah, it all seemed like he was playing into a role. So. um, And then. You know, we have Duke, who is the resident in cell. <laughs> Speak on it. Who wears a gun that close to their dick? I guess him. My thing was just, is that supposed to get wet? Like, right? Can't wouldn't you, it get like, rusty? mess up? Yeah. Wouldn't you mess up the chamber? I would have thought, but I don't know guns but like you that. You know what blew my mind? <laughs> All of those tattoos are his. It was not for the character. Oh, I figured that. It every single because like I thought they were a little bit aggressive in this movie. <laughs> some scenes I was like, are those his or did they like do something for this character? Right. I figured uh, that. N- no, I figured that. But that's you know, what, all him. When it comes to the the triangle between Whiskey Duke and Miles, though, I kept thinking like of all the men's women to like be appropriate with this the dude you choose. Like it seemed like he will snap you like a fucking twig. Did anybody was anybody? I wonder if anybody else was thinking that. Like in terms of like, if I was a dude and I'm going after, I'm fucking around with somebody else's girl. I'm not going to do it with his girl. 
You know what I mean? Like, but I think that also proves how big Miles' ego agreed was because agreed. I don't think I think you know he felt untouchable, and he was dead wrong about that one because I think <laughs> that would be the thing to get you fucked. Like, if he really cared, if Duke really cared, that would definitely be the thing to get you get you got. But yeah, so I think one of the most important scenes happened at this initial pool scene. And it's Miles' explanation for the disruptors group. He talks about how everyone is innovative in their own field, but you have Andy who clearly has a chip on her shoulder who was basically saying, that's cute and all, but Miles is bankrolling every single one of these people. Okay, this is not a game. Cut them down real quick. I love to see it. Love to see it. Love to see it. Let's go ahead and talk about the evening dinner. So they go into his grand dining room, which is filled with literally priceless pieces of art up and down. We find out that he's interested in this new initiative called Clear America which is essentially a highly experimental slash temperamental hydrogen fuel. After having that conversation of why are these people quote unquote friends, you you see the government connection, you see the science connection. You also see just literally Miles' diverse portfolio. (laughs) And one of the things I wanted to ask you, Ashley, is, is him... Funding people the only way he can have friends? At this point, I'd say yes. I don't think even that group still likes him or respects him enough to be around him were it not for the finances that he's given them in their different ventures. It almost seems like, I don't want to say it seems like they despise him. I don't know if despise is the right word, but I think I could. Resentment I definitely think from, lives yeah, there. I think from all of them, there's like this, this push and pull for him trying to get them to do things that they don't want to do. Well, before the hors d'oeuvres come out, <laughs> Detective Blanc figured out the murder mystery. <laughs> okay, surprise, <laughs> surprise. He barely sat down, Ashley, and he was like, yeah, Bertie did it with the um, bow and arrow from over there because you stole her her diamond, which he apparently did steal her diamond. Let us not forget that part. And the fact that he had Jillian Flynn write this up for him. The, the name dropping, the name dropping, Ashley. I laughed, I cackled and Dave's like, Jillian, I was like, gone girl, honey, gone girl, like. <laughs> Full author. Full author. Full author. (laughs) Miles is upset. He takes Detective Blanc upstairs to for him to collect his prize, which is an Apple iPod. (laughs) Because it's like, I get to the goofiness. It's like, would he have asked, do we win a prize if you figure it out? Like, I don't know. That just doesn't seem like something he would he would ask but he did and he obviously won an apple ipod um i would have definitely asked what is the point of all of this <laughs> <laughs> right a rich man's entertainment is not cutting it for me no <laughs> but we get a little bit more of the backstory or at least the oh i'm a lonely billionaire who doesn't trust the people because everybody wants to take for me and you get that old school picture of them at the glass onion along with the napkin still in the dining room the group of disruptors are having some interesting conversations we find out that andy was snubbed by miles by taking over alpha that company what do you think about the racial and gender implications of that particular broken partnership i was pissed what do i think i think i was pissed because how dare you do you feel like it would have been different if if andy was a man a white man would you feel still feel that same angst as a black woman probably not but i definitely would have still thought that it was fucked up yes you know you know, I don't, I, it's not as visceral, but it was still wrong. And the fact that all of them played a part in that was treacherous. 
Absolutely. Up until this point, we find out that Andy felt cheated not only by Miles, but by the entire group. Claire had the audacity to be upset, talking about, what do you want? (laughs) And it's like, I want the truth. Like, why? It takes Duke character to pretty much tell her, golden teat. Okay, (laughs) like, this is where the money's coming from. They literally are selling their souls for the dollar i think that was one of the hardest things for me uh with this group is realizing that they're all very morally corrupt you can at the s- heart yeah at you can the say very core you yes. can say what you want about you know motives and all of that but at the end of the day they all made the decision to go down this path that they felt was most lucrative for them So I didn't like any of them after this revelation came out, except for Andy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I ain't care if any of y'all got got. Okay. That part. But like a true murder mystery, someone actually has to die after what appears to have been initially poisoned, at least to me. Duke dies. His phone and his gun goes missing. Miles is scared because... Duke drank from his glass because everyone had their own glass with their favorite cocktail. Hysteria ensues because the lights went out at 10 o'clock. <sighs> Talk about what they say. Up in the ante. Up in the ante. Turning off all the lights. You got a dead person, a missing gun, and no lights. Ashley, did you think someone was after Miles and just accidentally got to Duke? No. So you never thought that? I had already figured it out at this point. You did? <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually one of the most upsetting things about this movie to me is how easily it was that I figured this this aspect of it out. So, yeah. I already know. Interesting. Knew. I wanted to highlight my favorite line that had me rolling is, is when Claire was like, because, of course, Detective Blanc was like, we got to call the cops. We have a dead person. Of course, all of the excessive things aren't actually functional, right? They're just (laughs) made, pretty much made out of ego. Uh, So they can't dock or so they have to wait till the the daytime. But Claire was like, oh, no, no, not the police. I can't be found with this man's rights YouTuber. (laughs) Your friend, (laughs) your friend of X number of years was just murdered in front of you. And all you care about is the optics. Yes. Again, these people are morally corrupt. The, you, know you know what? Morally bankrupt. That is that is yes! that is what yep. it is. That is what it is. <laughs> so everybody's running around in the dark, Ashley. And Blanc and Andy meets up outside. And in their conversation, Andy gets shot and killed. All the remaining disruptors were able to make it back to the dining room once the lights got turned on. Detective Blanc said the way we can move forward is we have to find out who killed Cassandra Brand. At this point, I like to highlight one of the most significant cameos of this entire movie. And that is of one Yo-Yo Ma. So it was so funny because when they were figuring out the different puzzles and things like that, Obviously, at home, we were trying to figure it out. And so when the musical one came on, I was like, that's Bach. And then and then I was like, oh, my goodness, it's your Ma. And so when he said that, oh, that's Bach's Little Fag and G minor, I was like, I did that shit. No, just like- <laughs> 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 but it is important to understand that a fag is a musical puzzle based off one tune and layered on top of itself it becomes a beautiful new structure and that's essentially what this movie did so we have essentially one timeline of events and then essentially the same events are added on top of what we already know in a different dimension and it creates a whole new movie whole new whole new structure in comes detective block being at home with his bae philip who is played by hugh grant which i did not expect (laughs) and a long hair andy that you find out oh my gosh she has a twin sister twin sister loved it it was very easy for her to track block down though that was a little concerning that's 
that's very true. I also thought it was interesting because we did find out that, in fact, Cassandra is dead. Her family was told that it was a suicide, but her sister was convinced that it was not. Hence her interaction with Detective Blanc. I thought it was interesting because Cassandra's life was in danger because she was able to find this red envelope that would have been essential to her court case where we saw the dirty deeds of the disruptors in full force, them lying on the bench, claiming that Miles was the one who had the original idea when everyone knew it was hers. That was very hard to watch, Ashley. It's one thing to hear it, but to see it, I'm like, y'all are some, y'all are some, I don't know. I was trying to think of a really bad insult. (laughs) Bitches. Uh, Awful. Y'all some bitches. Shitheads. I think that's what. That's uh, what she loved to call them, (laughs) shitheads. But to me, there's some little bitches because, and Lionel, you know, upset me the most. You should know better. I just, I can't imagine it. Like, it, it was so frustrating to watch this, this woman this Black woman lose what she had built with her friends. Okay? Exactly. Before him. He wasn't even a part of the group. He was not even a part of the group. Really quick, I'm going to go ahead and call out. I think it's interesting for his character in particular. He has represented a lot of crazy eccentric billionaires types. So when we first meet him, he's dressed as Tom Cruise in in, in one of his films where he plays like a, a crazy powered boss. And then when we see them later with uh, Alpha, you know, in the office of Alpha, he's definitely giving Steve Jobs vibes in his like black turtleneck. <laughs> and of course when we meet him on his island definitely elon musk vibes for sure and i think i started to think at this point to to you saying that is he's very unoriginal yes he's yes. a mimic yes yes and I didn't even bring this up. Speaking of unoriginal, that's why I think they utilize their wallet to make them interesting. Like they buy art pieces and want their names to be associated with the Mona Lisa. That's a, a big takeaway from that dining room scene. So Helen gets the whole makeover. They conspire to inf- infiltrate this uh, getaway on this private island. She studies up on Andy's journals in TED Talks, Blanc hooks her up with uh, wardrobe and hairstyling. <laughs> and we essentially go through the same series of scenes, not only from the perspective of Detective Blanc, but also with Helen added to the mix. I'm going to go ahead and ask you really quick. Did you notice that in the first film, the movie was from the perspective of Marta, but this one is from detective blanc's perspective do you think that changes elements of the story oh that's a good question i didn't really think about the comparison between the first knives out and this one in terms of how they structured it but i think again maybe it's supposed to be because blanc plays such a bigger role in the shenanigans surrounding everything he was much more of a central focus being that he actually attended this event infiltrated this group did all we know who he is unlike in the first movie he indeed he was someone new he was more mysterious so Mm. that could be it now that he to your point is established but again he plays just he's he's a different character himself within the world of this mystery so Mm. i think that's probably another reason speaking to the comparison between the two movies just an observation on my end the first one was very gray right very cold very gray but this one was like full of light and like i said luscious scenery with the ocean and the colors and the vibrancy of everything I, I think I think that was interesting. So we go back to that pool scene where we find out that what Helen and Detective Blanc is trying to do is figure out the three things that are important. We need suspects, motive, and opportunity. Just like Clue. <laughs> He's like very bad at dumb things. His Achilles heel. And that made me crack up because it's like, for you to be the world's greatest detective and like something as 
elementary as Clue. You I like that she used elementary because Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> She's also an elementary teacher, Helen. Mm, I see what you did there. Layers! No. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we see a different perspective on these scenes. We see Helen interacting with Whiskey, who is the only person to apologize to Andy, technically, out of this whole group saying like, oh, you got ripped off. <laughs> I want to apologize to Whiskey as well, because I definitely underestimated her until this scene and her yes. having so much to say and having a perspective and having intention behind what she's been doing. I was like, I, I'm i sorry. I definitely thought you were just arm candy as well. My Ooh. apologies, ma'am. Is it because it was from a male gaze when we were first introduced to her? I think it's that and it's also the stark contrast of me and my values versus what Duke, her partner, is representing. And so I definitely put her in a box because of that. And I just, I apologize because there was more to her than I thought. Absolutely. We also find out that Duke is using her to do the heavy flirtation because again, for him to be that Big beefy man having mouths rub up on your girl like that. That's what I said. He would have cut that man down like a twig if he wanted <laughs> to. Y'all better quit playing. <laughs> he ain't sleeping with his woman just because. Real quick, I just want to say that was fucked up, though. Because that means Gross. that you just saw her as disposable. Yep. And as a tool for your needs. Exactly. Because what he wants is to be featured on Alpha TV. Because, of course, a billionaire has access to media. <laughs> I wish I could see you actually right now. Say less. <laughs> Claire and Lionel talks about them doing unspeakable things in their sectors <laughs> in efforts to move Miles clear america agenda ahead claire signed off on the power plant uh lionel is adding it to the mission of his particular department they talked about how they wish andy would be wrong about clear because as i mentioned before it is experimental and highly temperamental form of fuel at least there was a little bit of pushback i did appreciate the moments of lionel like and this is where I stop you because I told you that I'm not I'm not getting down with this. I appreciated it, but I never knew if he really was going to have the balls or ovaries, I should say, to back it up. That part. That part. Birdie is in a load of crap as well with her business, Sweetie Pants, being produced and made in Bangladesh at actual sweat camps she was just a freaking idiot like oh my gosh it was a struggle it was a struggle i love that line where blanc says it's dangerous to mistake what he says dangerous to mistake speaking without thought with speaking the truth the truth who wrote that shit exactly that on a bumper sticker okay right there right there Ooh, that was a great line and she said i was like she's trump because she said are you calling me dangerous way to spin it baby way to spin it one of the things that helen told detective blanc was that she believes her sister was murdered and didn't actually kill herself and that she reached out to the group just days before she passed away but they never returned her emails and there was no correspondence after it and we find out from an interaction with claire and duke with helen that they actually did try to return andy's email through calls and showing up and this is pivotal because this helps prove the opportunity that someone showed up to her house and did some very bad things And to find out the entire group was there at one point is, you know, definitely getting warmer to the killer. Ultimately, Helen and Detective Blanc realize that they, whoever has the red envelope is the killer. We get to the same sequence where we see 
Helen being shot. And we find out quickly that she is not dead. Thank God. That one was something that I did not expect. I was like, I hope she's not really dead. Like Mm -hmm. that really would have saddened me. But Jeremy Renner's hot sauce for the win. Speaking of cameo names and also God bless his recovery. When that hot sauce went up her nose though, I was like, "Mm mm-mm. So goofy. <laughs> what would you do? What would you do, Ashley, if I saw us end up rolling up your nose like that? My best. I would have done my best <laughs> to hold it together like she did. Again, the 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 goofiness of it all. Said my best. <laughs> what else can you do? What else can you do? At the end of the damn day, Miles is the one who did all the things. Okay, he was the one. Who killed Cassandra in her home? He's the one that had the red envelope with the original napkin to prove, you know, proof of concept. He also was the one who killed Duke with pineapple juice. Too easy. And we joked about how Detective Blanc hates being bad at really dumb things. The fact that they emphasize how dumb Miles was, reminding me of the quote of, walk in the confidence of a mediocre white man. <laughs> right. Or Steve Jobs, why create when you can steal? Why? He had nothing that went on that was an original idea. Not a damn thing. It's like everything was always a light bulb moment from him when he'd hear it uttered by somebody else. I mean, the fact that he literally took Detective Blanc's idea of turning off the lights and shooting somebody. And then when Lionel made the suggestion of like, well, did you burn it? Or And it's like, oh, no. But the fact, I'm like, Helen, why are you this close to this man? Exactly. I When we were watching it um, with my family, I think my brother, somebody was like, did they at least take a picture or something? Like right. it is, we do have right. technology, baby. Like where was, why wasn't there more foresight to think that it could be destroyed? It is literally just a little napkin. <laughs> he he could have done many things with that napkin. So I definitely thought that there was going to be some type of backup, but maybe I there agree. was just no time. <laughs> But yeah, by the time he burned that freaking napkin and then that group of shitheads claimed that they didn't (laughs) see it, I was like, what is this movie doing? You know? And then Janelle Monae, the things she did in that room will go down in the same history as Angela Bassett throwing that cigarette in that car. (laughs) In the movie, Waiting to Exhale. Like, it will go... I put in my notes, Helen went, I bust the windows out your car. Mm-hmm. On Miles and all his toys. That was the only part that kept me guessing. I was like, where are we going with this? Where are we going? How is this going to wrap up? I was disappointed at how easy it was to figure out the murders that yeah. I was like, okay, this better be shock and awe. Y'all better really get me with this. And I agree. It was it was a fun, it was a fun scene. And then for everybody else to kind of join in, I'm like, see, here's the rage that y'all are holding in that y'all have towards Miles, but y'all just don't have the courage to they do anything got about no it. No courage. You know, I'm like, y'all can keep it. You can save it. What's this? <laughs> when she she tore up everything in that in that room and when she let the fire and started feeding the flames Mm -hmm. (laughs) she took the jacket off her back she was like everything must go yes it must have felt so good to break all that shit had to had to and the freaking mona lisa had to go to that was funny the look on his face (laughs) <laughs> the way she tossed him off her shoulders as she was running oh that was fun but Very. what type of dipshit creates a fail safe and shows everyone dipshit but the kicker for me was the fact that helen threw that little piece of clear into that fire and everything blew up Ooh. how did they survive 
Ooh. That was unrealistic, correct? I think it seemed unrealistic probably just because supposedly everything was running off of clear. So if that's the case, why did it only go up and blow up the glass onion? It seemed yes. like it would have infiltrated the whole building. But maybe it's supposed yes. to be the particular air vent mm. is the only one that fed into that building. You know what I okay. mean? So yeah. dispel your, you know, dispel reality. Of course. Film. And of let's course. say that's the case. The thing that hurt me, though, was that car. That hurt my feelings. I love Porsche. Like, oh. it's actually one of my favorite cars. And it was baby um, blue. <laughs> oh, your favorite color. That's right. Uh, <laughs> how could y'all do this to me? No, but that was that was fun. That was a fun scene. Because I think what got me more than anything with Miles and his nonchalant attitude would have enraged me. I was like, I don't know what y'all would have had. I would have killed that man with my bare hands. Like, I just don't. <laughs> Easily. I just don't know how she had the restraint. Because after you sit up here and said that you loved my sister and you, your condolences. But I know you're going to kill her. Like, it, y'all would have had. To, I would have turned into a straight savage. I would have killed that man with everything and I had in me. <laughs> that's the thing that I also love about it, too. Because I'm like avenge your sister sis avenge your sister okay girl girl girl. and when she told him at the end she was like this is your public launch for claire just know it's gonna be in the same line as you destroying the freaking mona lisa ashley i don't know if you noticed this but in that last shot i her face was like the mona lisa at that very very last closing Mm. shot Mm. That that half smirk, that half. I was like, this is genius. I love this movie. Before we end, what do you want to see in the next Knives Out Mystery? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't I have zero idea. Obviously, it's gonna Actors, be another location. Well, obviously, it's gonna be another stacked cast. Um, I think because I just had so much fun with the white lotus. Y'all can go ahead and set this in Italy. I won't be mad. Um, but we haven't been have we been in America yet? Was the first one in... Yes. In, the first one was... Because I couldn't... For some reason, it I kept thinking Coast. it was in Britain. For no, some reason. Okay. Okay. Well, definitely let's have another lush location for you alone. Just so you can get your kicks. <laughs> and stat cast. Give me another stat cast. I don't have any like dream go-tos for anybody to necessarily be in it. But as long as it's, you know, some, some fun actors a mystery that i cannot solve is preferred because the first one was much more mysterious for me than this one in terms of that in terms of Mm -hmm. plot and but they gave it away halfway through in the first one but it was still more juicy i guess for me in like certain ways like i just okay I, I, I sunk my teeth into the the mystery of it more than I did with this one again. That was the whole Miles thing. I was like, that, that was a no-brainer, like, for me, really quickly. It's so obvious. But, yeah, I don't know. Are these based off of books? No. So I'm glad that you say that because while I was watching it, I was like, this reminds me of another set of mi- murder mystery movies I tend to watch. And it's Murder on the Orient Express. Actually, Leslie Seen Odom those. Jr. was actually in that one. Um, and then the more recent one is Death on the Nile, which again features a world class detective. And these are based off of Agatha Christie's books. So yeah, I've seen those. Um, but these are written by Ryan Johnson, the director, writer, producer. Well, then I hope they have a great story to be told. Because I was going to say, if it's based off of books, I have no doubt that they'll still have some really good material. But we'll see what happens. Do you have any wish list for the next one? Uh, That's a great question. Wish list. I'd like us to go somewhere we haven't gone before. Whether So we technically have done Europe now that we've done Greece. I don't know. We can go anywhere from Asia. Go to somewhere around there. African safari somewhere. I don't know. I I do enjoy these, though, in terms of actors. Who are some of my favorite actors? I have a lot of them. You know, because Kiki Palmer keeps a job. I would love to see her somewhere. Uh, (laughs) Post baby. That would be fun. (laughs) Final thoughts on Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Uh, Again, it was a fun ride. Janelle Monae is everything. Her skin was Oh my God, another yes. world in this movie. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. 
I really, really do hope that I can't guess the next one, I guess is my biggest <laughs> takeaway because I was disappointed. <laughs> um, but the cast, the fun slapstickiness of it, all of that just really kept me throughout the movie and made it a good time. And I need Blanc to, you know, continue to be able to sink his teeth into some things so he's not sitting up in the bathtub for weeks and months at a time. So and I'm gonna need more interaction between Blanc and Philip because I had no idea he <laughs> had somebody at home. I'm like, oh my gosh. The amount of cameos and name drops alone in this movie made me laugh out, I think, the most. Because it was like some of the most random. Like, for example. Jared Leto's kombucha. Kombucha. You have Angela Lansbury, Stephen Sondheim, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Sister Natasha from- Lyons. Thank you. I don't expect to see them on a random Zoom call. Like... <laughs> Rest in and peace, Angela Lansbury, too. Rest in peace, Stephen Sondheim. I was going to say, these were their last movie appearances. I mean, Detective Blanc just said Highly Berry at one point. And then to, to my point <laughs> earlier. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you have freaking Halle know your Berry, mom? That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm going to use that. I was like, ah, it's- Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> And freaking Serena Williams. Yes, I loved that scene. I love that random cameo. It tickled me so much. And I I enjoy a good murder mystery. It, it was a lot of fun. Janelle Monet acted her behind off. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And I love Daniel Craig in all forms, whether he is badass and broody or goofy and figuring out a mystery. So I am here for it. All right, Ashley, if there's nothing else, time for Hidden Gems. I have three Hidden Gems. My first one is not hidden and not new, but I have to talk about it because it is Severance on Apple TV+. And I am so late to this party, guys, but I know Severance was on many a list of the best shows from 2022. First time I tried to watch it, though, I could not get into it. It took a conversation with friends, I think, during Thanksgiving to get me to give it another shot. And now I am pissed. I should have waited for season two to drop because I am dying for more from this series. I saw that they're currently underway in production for season two, but God, it was so good. So, 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 so good. I cannot wait to see what they do next with this series. Hidden gem number two, The Invitation on Netflix. I love me some Natalie Emanuel. Yeah, but you don't watch scary movies. So what are you doing? But I love vampires. I do too. Okay, touche. So but this was a no-brainer. No, no, this was a no-brainer. <laughs> when I saw horror at first, I was like, oh, horror. And then I saw, but it's vampires. Oh, I got it. There's some scary vampires. But I still watch all of them. Like vampires is one is that's a genre of horror that I just uh sexy yeah. most of the time. Um including one of the cuties from the Gossip Girl reboot, Thomas yes, Doherty. Yes, yes. That did He's not also hurt from either. Disney Channel descendants. <laughs> I, I saw that why he, I know that. He used to date one of the Yes, young ladies yes. yeah mm-hmm. yeah so i did see that i don't like looking at him when he's young though it makes me feel weird he's a grown man now no he is um, he is i had a it, it had a bit of a get out feeling for me um complete with the tea scene but overall i just feel like it's an interesting addition to the vampire collection that we have going so yes and the ending was everything for me. So <laughs> I love, I loved it. Um, and my last hidden gem is a bookstore, Spellbound Bookstore. If you happen to find yourself in Sanford, Florida, this new locally owned bookstore is worth checking out. I was greeted by and chatted with the owner whose passion for the shop gave me Kathleen Kelly and the shop around the corner vibes from You've Got Mail. I grabbed Tabitha Brown's latest cookbook while I was there and am waiting Yay. for Sonny Hostin's second book yes. in the summer on the Bluff series. They have that waiting for me when I when it's released. So 
I really enjoyed going. I'm sure I'll be back even before Sunny's book is released to check out some other things. They also have book clubs. They've started a series having authors come in and speak about their books and do signings and all that stuff. And, you know, I just love supporting local. I think it's really important to yes. support your local businesses, particularly those that are in constant competition with the likes of Amazon. So Spellbound Bookstore, if you guys are anywhere around the Florida area. And those are my three hidden gems, Delora. What about you? Thank you, Ashley. I have three as well. So the first one happened during the holiday time off. It was Beauty and the Beast, a 30th celebration. So the celebration of 30 years of Beauty and the Beast. Can you imagine? Wow. One of my childhood favorites for sure. And I was really excited about the cast. We have her playing Belle Mm -hmm. um, and then Josh Groban and my personal faves, David Ellen Greer and Martin Short playing Cobsworth and Lumiere was just like everything. But can we say Joshua Henry as Gaston? I was like, yes, sir. Come through muscles and vocals. Like, (laughs) can you believe I still haven't watched this yet? I'm very surprised. I feel now, like I'm holding on to it for like a day when I really need it. Does that make sense? Have you ever had something that you're like just holding on to for a moment when you need a lift? I feel like that's yes, what I'm waiting and for. And that's my second hand gem. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. Now, I will say it's a combination of, you know, behind the scenes of the original and the history of the making of the film, as well as these wonderful actors performing the musical number. So it's, it's an interesting setup. So it's nothing like some of the live uh, performances we've seen recently, whether like, like the Wiz with David Ellen Greer as the lion or the little mermaid with Queen Latifah as Ursula type of deal. So. Got it. But it was fun and, you know, we love a good behind the scenes moment. So just knowing the idea that the team had and they brought it to life and the history and the legacy of Beauty and the Beast becoming the first animated movie to win an Oscar, (laughs) like kind of in kind of insane and having the great Celine Dion sing. (laughs) <laughs> the title song in the end credits winning Grammys, but Rolling Stones apparently don't care about that. All right. My second hit and gem. I should get by that and burn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about that edition of Rolling Stone, guys. The Sex Lives of College Girls, season two. So here's the deal. I know you had season two as a hidden gem before, but I finally got a chance to watch all of it. And I didn't even remember I did. So thank you for the reminder. I think you did. If <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> I watched it though. Ashley, talk about watching it when you needed it. I wanted to wait for the season to be complete so I could binge it because it's a delicious 25 to 30 minute episode type of show and the way I cackled I haven't laughed this hard in a series in a long time and just consistently like I loved it loved it loved it shout out to our girl Renika yeah um renewed for her, season three already too loved her this season it was just good and there were some twists and turns. Yeah. I did not expect. Mm, that ending. Mm, don't let me messy, get my hands messy, messy. on you, girl. Don't let me get my hands on you. Well, and also with one of the characters is having a quote unquote hard time. I was like, bye, bitch. You were reckless this season. So I'm not cry- crying you a river. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Delora. <laughs> no nah, there's only one character i have an issue with and you know who you are <laughs> and my final hidden gem is a song i know we are in the dead of winter but this song called summer rain featuring one of the greatest voices of our generation jasmine sullivan it is a 
um, Leon Bridges song. I just got a hold of it recently and it has been on repeat. It is the best like chill, laid back, vibey songs. And of course, the things that Jasmine does on songs is just otherworldly. But highly recommend it. Available on your favorite music streaming service. And that's all I have for today. All right, kids. It's been fun. It's been real. We'll be back with Welcome headlines. back, y'all. Welcome <laughs> back, y'all. <laughs> we'll be back with headlines and hot topics. In the meantime, be blessed. Share this episode with your friends, your family, whomever you see fit. We appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Thank y'all. Bye.